Hey everyone, and welcome to the Wall Street Stockcast channel. You know, every once in a while, you stumble upon something in the market that just doesn't make sense. It feels like a glitch, a crack in the code, where the numbers on the screen are telling you one thing, but the reality on the ground is screaming something else entirely. Well, today, we're diving headfirst into one of those situations. Come on, we've all had this dream, right? You walk up to a vending machine, you put in 90 cents, and out pops a crisp, perfect $1 bill. Now, what do you do? You don't just take your diamond profit and walk away. No way. You'd stand there, feeding that machine every coin you have until your pockets were empty or the machine was. It's the ultimate fantasy. A guaranteed, risk-free profit machine. Okay, but what if I told you that this isn't just some fantasy? That right now, a real-world version of that broken vending machine might actually exist in the stock market? I know, it sounds totally impossible. But we're going to follow the math the cold hard numbers, and they all point to one company, Bitmine, ticker symbol BMRN. So let's just jump right in. The very first piece of this puzzle is the math. It's so simple, it's almost hard to believe, and it's really the foundation for this whole crazy story. It all boils down to one simple idea, 90 cents. That's it, that's the number. This is the heart of the entire anomaly we're talking about today. And look, in a market that's supposed to be efficient, a number like this just shouldn't be possible. Because right now, according to the company's own audited financial statements, for every 90 cents you pay for a share of Bitmine stock, you are buying one full dollar of the company's real, tangible, countable assets. It is literally buying a dollar for 90 cents. And listen, this isn't some back-of-the-napkin calculation. These are the hard numbers. The stock market today says the entire company is worth $12 billion. That's its market cap. But if you look at their books, their net asset value, what they own minus what they owe, that number is $13.2 billion. The price is just disconnected from reality. So the big question is, what's in that $13.2 billion vault? Let's, you know, pry open the doors and take a look inside. Because we're not talking about fuzzy concepts like brand value here. We're talking about real stuff the company owns today. Now, to really get how weird this is, think about how a normal tech stock is valued. You buy a stock like NVIDIA, you are paying a massive premium. You're paying for hope. Hope of future earnings, brand recognition, all that goodwill. With Bitmine, it's the complete opposite. The whole argument is that you're paying less than what you'd get if you just shut the company down and sold off all the parts. All right, let's start the inventory check. First up, $1 billion. And that's not a projection, it's not a promise. That is $1 billion of cold, hard cash sitting in a JP Morgan bank account. That's the bedrock. Next on the list, and this is a huge one, 3.8 million Ethereum tokens. I mean, depending on the day, that's billions and billions of dollars in value right there. We're not talking about a company that just dabbles in crypto. They have a massive treasury that makes them a serious player in this space. And it's not just cash and crypto. This company has a huge physical footprint. We're talking about massive plots of land in Texas, their own electrical substations, 50,000 specialized immersion cooling tanks, and literally hundreds of thousands of mining computers. This is a heavy-duty industrial operation. You know, this whole thing is like a perfect textbook example of what Benjamin Graham, you know, the guy who basically taught Warren Buffett everything he knows, called the margin of safety. He looked for these exact situations his whole life where the assets on the books create this huge cushion. The only difference is he was finding them in boring old textile mills, not in a high growth tech company. OK, so this brings us to the billion dollar question, right? If the value is so screamingly obvious, why on earth does this discount even exist? And to figure that out, we have to look past the numbers and into the psychology of the market. This whole discount exists because the market is freaking out about the noisy waves on the surface. And to be fair, these aren't nothing burgers. There are real lawsuits. There are some pretty nasty reports from short sellers. Plus, the price of Ethereum is all over the place. That's a perfect storm of fear. So the bear case is that all this noise points to real fundamental problems. But the bull case? It says the market is so obsessed with the choppy waves, it's totally ignoring the powerful, massive tide of asset value underneath. And this quote just nails that bull argument. It's saying that investors are so scared of the risks that they've taken this high-growth tech company with billions in assets and slapped the price tag of a failed, bankrupt furniture store on it. And that's really the core conflict here. Is the market right to be this scared, or is it making a colossal error? So. People on the bull side of the argument will tell you that the assets themselves create a kind of safety net. 
You can think of it like financial gravity. There are these natural forces that should, in theory, create a hard floor under the stock price, which would protect you from some of those risks we just talked about. The best analogy I've heard for this is trying to hold a beach ball underwater. You can do it. You can use all your strength, which in this case is market fear and selling pressure, to keep it submerged. But the whole time, the ball's natural buoyancy, its basic physics, is fighting you, trying to explode back up to the surface. Well, in this story, that upward pressure is the company's $13 billion in assets. And there are two really powerful economic forces that create this floor. First, the company can just buy its own stock. I mean, think about it. Using their billion in cash to buy their own shares at a 10% discount? That's an amazing return for shareholders. Second, a predator could show up. Some giant hedge fund or sovereign wealth fund could just buy the whole company for $12 billion, sell off the assets for $13.2, and make a quick, easy billion-dollar profit. The threat of that alone can keep the price from falling too far. Now, this is where the bull case gets really wild. If you believe that you're buying all those assets for 90 cents on the dollar, then the math says you're actually getting the entire operating business, the part that makes money, for less than nothing, for free. So let's quickly look at a metric called enterprise value. It's basically the price you'd pay for just the core business operations. And a simple way to calculate it is to take the market cap and subtract out all the cash. What's left over is what the market thinks the actual business is worth. So for Bitmine, the number comes out to negative $1 billion. Just let that sink in for a second. The stock market isn't saying the business is worthless. It's saying the business is such a huge liability, you'd have to be paid a billion dollars just to take it. So you really have to ask yourself, does that make any sense at all? A business that's a key part of the Ethereum network, that spits out massive amounts of cash, that has partnerships with giants like BlackRock, is that really a billion dollar liability? It's just a massive contradiction. So if you believe the bull argument, here's what you get for free at today's price. The whole mining operation, their proprietary MVAN software, all their patents, the management team, the whole shebang. And on top of that, you get what some people call a double compounder effect because you're buying an appreciating asset, Ethereum, at a discount. So you could win if the discount closes and win again if ETH goes up. Now look, these kinds of major market screw-ups, they usually don't last forever, which leads to the obvious question, what could make this gap between price and value finally close? Well, it looks like a few things are lining up that could force the market to wake up and smell the coffee. So who's starting to notice? Well, the so-called smart money. We're talking about quantitative funds, the quants, that have these computer programs running 24-7 just hunting for weird stuff like this. A company trading for less than its book value, Bitmain is now a giant flashing red light on all their screens. Arbitrage funds, even sovereign wealth funds, they're all getting the alert. And you can almost see a potential timeline for how this corrects. Right now, the market's distracted. Soon, you might see buying from those quant funds start to build a floor. But the big one, the next earnings report, new accounting rules are about to force them to report their crypto holdings at current market value. That's going to put those billions in assets right on the front page, making this discount undeniable. After that, the theory goes, the price could snap back to reality pretty quick. At the end of the day, it really comes down to this. You can look at the ticker symbol and see a story of fear, risk, and uncertainty. Or you can look at the audited balance sheet and see a completely different story, one told in cold, hard numbers. The argument is that one of those is a temporary feeling and the other is a permanent fact. This really is one of those fascinating moments. The market has drawn a line in the sand. The bears see a company with too much risk to touch. The bulls see a historic, once in a decade bargain. All the signs suggest the market is waking up to this. The only question is, which side is right? And will this glitch in the matrix get fixed before everyone else notices? Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for watching.